you've won everything in your time at Chelsea. This is the only, literally the only club trophy you haven't won. How, how much are you motivated personally to complete the set? And is that how you see it? I'm really motivated. Uh, as I said before, losing that one in 2012, it hurt a lot. And, and this is the, the only competition that uh, the club didn't win, not myself. I think uh, to win it for the first time for the club is huge. Uh, we have to make uh, everything that we have to put it out on the pitch. I think uh, it has a great meaning for, for everybody, for the fans. We are representing Europe and uh, we have to evaluate how difficult it is and all the journey that we have had to make it here. We have to give everything and hopefully, uh, you know, first tomorrow and then go step by step because we know it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. But uh, when you have one chance like we have in in this tournament, in this week, we have to make the most of it and hopefully take it. Uh, you, you could write your names in, into sort of Chelsea legend, really, couldn't you? Of winning this this tournament, does it does does that inspire that piece of history? Yeah, of course. Uh, as I said before, the Chelsea never won it. Uh, we lost the, the 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 final on in 2012, and and you know maybe sometimes in Europe we have a different perception of what the tournament uh, is, but uh, the reality is that it's very difficult to be here, that we are playing against the champions in other continents and how difficult it is not only to be the, the champion in your continent, but being here and being the, the World Cup champion. And that's what we aim for. And, you know, of course, we have a huge motivation. Hopefully we can bring it for the fans as well. When you joined Chelsea in, in 2012, you walked into a dressing room of legendary players, lots of legendary Chelsea players. If someone would have said to you back then you'd have the chance to actually go one step further than a lot of those players and, and manage to do something they've not done, what do you think you'd have said? And also, can I just ask, I, I appreciate you don't want to talk about your future here, but if you complete the set, do you think that could come into your thinking about what you do next for the future? My, my future, my future is not the most important thing right now. Of course, that uh, you know, my main target is to win the trophy. Then we will see we have time for for my future. But in the first question that you mentioned about the legends, I think everyone we try to create our own history in the history of the club. You know, uh, through the years we have seen many many world class players, managers, everybody in the club that try to help to become. Uh, uh, to, to, to increase the, the, the trophy cabinet of this club and we are part of it and when the time arrives you want to make the most of it and, and now it's true that we have our own opportunity to create history in, in the club to win a trophy that anybody has won it uh, in Chelsea and, and hopefully we are the ones that we, we do it. Uh, have you had to speak to any of the younger players at Chelsea just stressing the importance of winning whatever trophy you're in? Uh, and, and just talking about this, because obviously this is not a tournament that's always big on priorities. Is that something you've had to get the message across to the younger players? Yes, because uh, I think when we are young, we don't realise uh, or we think that we might have more opportunities. And then with the time, you see how difficult it is to not only to win trophies, but also to get in, into finals. And, and of course, sometimes you can win, sometimes you can lose. But this kind of tournaments. It's not like a, a normal cup that you play every year, you know. As uh, of course every competition we we enter, we want to win, and this one is is a rare one that uh, we 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 didn't play so often in the last uh, ten years, and I think everybody is very aware how difficult it is and and that we cannot uh, miss the chance. Hi, Cesar. Um, you you. You've obviously been without Thomas um, this week. Can you can you describe what it's like um, without him and the, the the impact it has without him on the on the on the touchline in training, on the touchline in the game? Well, of course, we are very disappointed that uh, Thomas cannot be here. It's a situation that uh, we cannot change. That uh, uh, the same as in the fake cup game uh, tomorrow, he won't be. With us here, and and you know we we have to to be ready for it. Uh, of course, he will be very important in in everything in the game involved in pre-game during the game. He has a direct connection with his uh, coaching staff, uh, with the dressing room. So you know we we cannot uh, think farther than this. You know it's just what it is. Is uh, we have to adapt. We we have the technology now that we can 
communicate straight away. So um, hopefully uh, we we try to to fill the gap, even if it's impossible to to fill it. But everybody, we will need to step up, uh, try to to do the best for him as well, because uh, you know it's an opportunity for everybody, and and for tomorrow's game, uh, he won't be able to be with us. Advice, mm-hmm. Cesar. Uh, I don't know if you have the poss- if you had the possibility or the chance to see the footage from other Brazilian fans coming over here, uh, supporting the club Brazilian, the Brazilian club Palmeiras when they were leaving Brazil. But if you couldn't, if you didn't see that, what did you, uh, what did was what did, uh, your Brazilian friends, Thiago Silva, Jorginho, what did they tell you about how huge is this moment for them, for Brazil, and possibly for other clubs? Over here, well, uh, yeah, we could see the, the images. Uh, you know, tomorrow's opponent is not uh, Palmeira, so we have to go step by step. But uh, we saw what it meant uh, for for the people in Brazil. We had experience in, in Japan when we played in 2012 against Corinthians. You know, is you know, uh, is how they live, and you know, football uh, is huge, and and you know. Uh, that's it. I mean that we didn't have uh, fans when we left the airport. Uh, it means that for us, it's not a, a very important tournament, which is it's a, a huge opportunity for for everybody at the club, for our fans, for us at the club. So we'll do everything we can to to get the trophy back to London. Hi, Cesar. Um, uh, Kepa, when he came, he, he he had a really tough time. Um, it must be difficult for him as a most expensive goalkeeper in the world to be on the bench. We've seen over the past month or so, and really since Thomas came in, how much he seems to have improved, his uh, confidence seems to have risen. I just want a, a sort of an inside perspective on that, someone who works obviously so close with him as to the sort of fortitude that takes to, to come back the way he has. Well, it's true that uh, the first year, I think he, he played really well. Uh, you know, it's not easy to become uh, the most expensive goalkeeper. Then uh, he, he went through tough moments. Um, since uh, Thomas arrived, he he gave him the confidence. He gave him games. Uh, he started to uh, to be really important for the team. I think the the attitude that he has had uh, has been amazing uh, towards uh, Edu, towards uh, Marcus, uh, Hilario, the goalkeeping coach. You know, we have a fantastic group of goalkeepers that we have seen how important they are for the team. Uh, whoever plays, plays a huge part. And, you know, we are very lucky to have uh, two goalkeepers like like Edu, you know, now uh, champions of Africa, which is amazing for him and his country and, and to have Kepa here with us as well. So now, uh, you know, I see only the, the work that uh, Kepa has been doing uh, in every training session, even if he knew he was not playing. He has been always ready for the team, and and as I said, you know we have to enjoy how the situation is with our keepers and and have the chance to to have them with us. Hi, hi, Cesar. Um, you've built such a strong connection with the club, and I'm, I'm guessing with London as well, because you've been here so long. If um, the conditions are right for you, would it be that you can continue to stay at Chelsea rather than finding something else in the summer? I'm not gonna speak nothing about my future. You know, we are right now one day before the semi-final of the tournament. You know, uh, of course, you know I arrived in London 2012. Uh, I didn't have kids. My kids they were born in London. You know, you know how I feel about uh, about Chelsea. But you know, I'm not gonna not gonna comment nothing in in that. You know, maybe with the time you realize how difficult it is to to get in there, and you know, maybe the circumstances or the feelings we had around. Maybe we felt it different, and and that made the difference. You know, we saw how Corinthians prepared the game. Mm, you know, sometimes small details can make the difference. And in that day, we were not at at our best, and and of course that it, it hurt a lot. <laughs>